So, Father, would you bless us now? In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Our hearts say, thank you, Lord. And amen. Come on, let's give God a praise. You sing a song, say he didn't have to do it, but he did. And because he did, let us give God praise. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask that you would uh, uh, turn with us to uh, hymn number 161. And let's sing a little bit of Amazing Grace. God's Amazing Grace. And a lot of folks that, when, when, when they're going through hard times, they turn to Amazing Grace. But you and I ought to be able to turn and sing Amazing Grace even while we are praising Him. Even when things are going well, we ought to be able to turn and sing Amazing Grace. Uh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Praise. 
We need to praise God in the morning, in the noon, and at night. And we need to thank Him for all that He's doing for us. Amen. Then we need to thank Him in advance for what He wants to do in us. And what He wants to do through us. Amen. Amen. We're going to hear from our church administrator at this time and prepare ourselves for prayer. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Building our sure foundation upon this rock, I will build my church and gates of hell and not prevail against it. Matthew 16, 18. For other foundation can no man lay that that to this lady, which is Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 3, 11. Building faith, family, and fellowship on the principles and promises of God's word. Our thought for today, found on the left side of your bulletin. Go gently through this day, keeping your eyes on me. I will open up the way before you as you take steps of trust along your path. Sometimes the way before you appears to be blocked, and you in you focus on the obstacle or search for a way around it. You will probably go off course. Instead, focus on me, the shepherd, who is leading you along your life's journey. Before you know it, the obstacle will be behind you and you will hardly know how you pass through it. That is the secret of success in my kingdom. Although you remain aware of the visible world around you, your primary awareness of me is of me. When the road before you looks rocky, you can trust me to get you through that rough patch. Mm. My presence enables you to face each day with confidence. I am the good shepherd. Mm -hmm. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. That's John 10, 14, 15. Our key theme and verse was 2020. Together. But see first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Matthew 6, 33. Sunday, October 18th, morning worship begins at 11 a.m. Sunday, October 25th, 2020, 11 a.m., our morning worship begins. Sunday, November 1st, 8 a.m. is our men's prayer fellowship, morning worship at 11 a.m. Sunday, November 8th, uh, 8 a.m. is our PDM, morning worship begins at 11 a.m., and Holy Communion will be served following morning worship, and Sunday, November 15th, morning worship begins. At 11 a.m. Don't wait, vote, and don't complain. Mm. Amen, amen. Yeah. I want to re-emphasize the importance that we are coming up. Everybody says that this is the most important election that we have ever had. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to be real serious about it. We need to take our time, mm -hmm. get the information that you need. If you need support, if you need uh, understanding on how to fill these things out or where to take them to, we need to start raising our hands and calling out. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. You ask not. There are so many things that are taking place. and. And one of the things that uh, we ought to sort of rejoice in as a testimony this morning, how mm -hmm. Sister Jackson is talking about how she's seen God work fast, but he really, really mm -hmm. did some rapid things on her behalf. Amen. And, Amen. and uh, Amen. you know, out of a tease, I, I, I was, she says she got her things in there. I was wondering if she took them raccoons with her. <laughs> no, I left them in Dorfman. Left them where they were. <laughs> You know, so there, there are some things Amen. that, you know, we need to really rejoice in the Lord when God Amen. does great things for us. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, uh, and at the same token, I noticed that there are a lot of folks, if you look at, any time you look at the news, you see that folks are really serious. Um, some folks want to uh, say, I want to stand, and I'm going to wait until that particular day, and then I'm going to go on in the end stand in the line, and, and that's admirable. Amen. 
there are some folks that have been in lines that I hear long hours of standing in the lines. And you need to look at your own personal set of circumstances. Because if your body won't uh, uh, support you standing in a long line like that, you need to say, hey, you know, I need to find another way to make this thing happen. Uh, even if you have to get it, I've seen where there are folks that they have drive-ups, where they drive up to a, uh, uh, these legitimate boxes. Uh, there are folks that are going straight over to the uh, election uh, uh, centers, et cetera, et cetera. So do what you need to do and cry out. And let's just make sure that we do things and do it the right way so that as we cast our votes, amen, uh, uh, that little phrase, I want to get that up there a little bit bigger, a whole lot bigger. Don't wait, vote. And, and don't complain, vote. You know, so many folks, uh, 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 we wait until after it's all over. And, and uh, uh, it's interesting the way that God has been navigating us through the different uh, series that uh, a lot of the things that are happening in the lives of the children of Israel are happening in parallel in our lives. So it shows the relevance of where we are and the relevance of God's word both thousands of years ago and right now today. Amen? Amen. There, there's a lot of misinformation that is going on out there. We're going to see that in the text. We're going to see some things where, you know, when you get bad information and when somebody gives you bad juju or when somebody scams you, then you're ready to, to respond in certain ways. But you'll also see where God has already put his stamp out and forbids them to do certain things. So he, the same thing happens to us. And, and uh, when I listened to uh, Sister uh, Jackson's testimony, and she called me earlier during the week, and, and, and I was excited with her because I know how long she's been laboring, and I know the different stage now. The first time she called on the Lord, and this is, this is a lesson that we need to learn about when we call on the Lord. We called on the Lord, and she told the Lord what she wanted. She told the Lord what she was in need of, but God did not take her from there straight to where she is right now. She went through about two or three different stopping places. Amen? And, and, and she had to demonstrate somewhere along the line that, God, I, I, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm thanking you that you have me in motion. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You and I need to constantly pray and praise God for putting us in motion. Because if we're in motion, okay, we still know that God's moving. God is moving and acting on our behalf. So we need to thank God and we need to praise God for what he's doing and, 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 and how he's going to make it happen for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, uh, uh, I, I mentioned earlier, there are a number of folks. For those that have not heard, Sister Johnson, Sister Kathleen Johnson has gone home to spend her eternity with the Lord. And, 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 and uh, when, I, when I had uh, a prayer with her daughter uh, a few days ago, I mean, I could not, I couldn't, I was, I was so excited. Now, you know you miss her, but I was so excited over the fact that she lived it right. She did it right. Yes. She loved the Lord. She wasn't ashamed of the Lord. Right, she right. demonstrated yeah. her love for the Lord. Yeah. She was a strong, yeah. firm prayer warrior for the Lord. Right. She was concerned about everyone getting engaged in prayer. And she started out talking about with the children, and then she started talking about the, 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 the older ones, and then right on up the line, the next you know, she talking about praying for everybody. Everybody need to be praying for everybody. And, and, and she had such a strong, consistent testimony of her great love for the Lord. And when I went to pray with her daughter, all I could do was rejoice. And I mean, I, 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 I was concerned because, I mean, I couldn't even muster up a tear. All right, man. You know, I, you, you know, you, you, 
I was so caught up. And next thing I know, she was hallelujah and praising the Lord in the prayer. I said, God, you got us on the right track now. Amen. 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 So we need to rejoice and we need to thank God for what God is doing in their lives. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, her service will be tomorrow morning. The, the, uh, 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 I do have a couple of these things laying around, and I'll get them in the back. But uh, the uh, it's going to be right up here on the on 15th and uh, Master at Acts of the Apostles. Not Acts of the Apostles. I'm sorry, uh, Shiloh, Shiloh, up on the right hand. On the uh, it would be the right hand if you're going up toward Broad Street uh, side. And uh, actually, we had a banquet. Went banquet there before. Now, in addition to that. Um, the viewing is the viewing is going to be from nine until eleven. Mm -hmm. The service starts at eleven, and uh, um, what happens is uh, if uh, and those that are going to be uh, flagged and those that are participating in this particular service, we are asking that you march in with the family. Amen. Those that are, just like say for instance, those who read scripture or anything like that, we're asking that you march in with the family. They, you must be in a mask, and you're going to keep them on. And also, what we're, what they're uh, going to do, they have a limit, a number limit, and they're going to be backfilling so that during the time of the viewing, at the end of the viewing, a certain part of the viewing, they're going to move to clear that place, bring the family in, and then I guess they're going to backfill up to that number of 100 with people that are coming in. All right? So be mindful of what the expectation is. We are still in a pandemic, and we still want to honor and serve the Lord in whatever way uh, we can. Okay? Check Facebook him so we can set up. We need some additional space. Amen? All right. Now, that being said... I got two calls yesterday, and in both of those calls yesterday, in both the calls yesterday, it, well, the the, uh, the call was about two people, and in that call, in those calls, it was all around us, uh, two more folks that have gone home to be with the Lord. On the back of our bulletin, there was a uh, gentleman that was on there, one of the a gentlemen I told you from work. And uh, uh, we were praying for him, and uh, we got the message that he went home to be with the Lord mm -hmm. on Friday night. In addition to that, there is a young man, there, there's a young man by the name of, uh, 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 actually, he used to live up here in the middle of this block. He has gone home to be with the Lord as well. So... What we want you to do and understand is we need you to pray. And we need you to be serious about praying for all these different folks that are going through. Amen? Those that are, are going to be trying to uh, support the chances in this service tomorrow, we pray that you'll give us some kind of an idea so we can understand. Excuse me, who's we can expect and what, uh, what we can expect to uh, to do, Amen? Amen. At this time, we're gonna add, we're gonna have prayer, and uh, we want you to remember all those that that have been mentioned. Prayer and praise, prayer and praise, prayer and praise, Amen. Amen. Uh, I've actually seen the the bulletin, and I, I you know I, I I wrote a letter. But I said y'all have really honored your mother. You have really blessed. And honor yeah. your mother and the way yeah. you put this thing together. And, and we're just rejoicing in the fact that God has welcomed his child home. We're going to miss her. Yeah. But oh, God yeah. and heaven has got to be having a good time right yeah. now. Amen? Yeah. Somebody lead us to the throne of grace and let's just praise and thank God for all that he's doing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Most holy and everlasting God, our Father, Lord, we thank you for this, this another day. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come together and just lift our voices in praise to you. 
Lord, we thank you right now for all this, all the names that have been called. And Lord, we thank you right now just for being a being special and having a having a special impact in each one of these lives. Lord, we ask that you would bless. We ask that you would bless uh, Mr. Dante Murphy. Mm. Lord, we ask that you we ask a special special praise. Uh, Special prayer and a special praise for Miriam. Yeah. Well, we ask, we ask that whatever this the 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 need with the medical need that she's dealing with right now, Lord, you would you would work on her behalf in a mighty way. She's she's given praise that you've done so much already. Yes, God. Yes, God. And Lord, we just ask that you would just continue to bless her, continue to open her mind and her heart, that she might be willing to give all to you. Lord, we ask that you would touch we ask that you would touch the Graves family. Lord, we ask that you would, you would touch everyone, everyone concerned. Lord, we ask that you would bless the Floyd family. Mm -hmm. Lord, we ask that you would minister in a mighty way. Lord, we ask that you would touch this neighborhood, touch this community. Yes, Lord. Lord, there's changes occurring every day. Lord, we ask that you would show us how to be be willing and be able to go forth and share your word no matter what. Lord, we ask that you would bless this community. Bless the leadership. Bless the leadership of this country. As we're going through these tumultuous times, Lord, you still told us to pray for the pray for those who have, have lead over you. Lord, we ask that you would show us how to be how to be willing vessels to pray and to yield and to do what you've called us to do. Lord, we ask that you would even touch the hearts and the minds of those in charge, those in command, to, to give, them, give them wisdom to be able to understand what they're doing and where they're doing, and Lord, that they are still under your authority. Yes, God. Lord, we ask that you would bless this service Bless Pastor Graves and his family. Lord, bless everything that's said and done this day. May it be said and done to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 As we give consideration to the Lord, uh, as we, uh, for our worship through giving, there's a couple verses that I'm just going to read them right now. Uh, you might want to jot them down. They will be, uh, we will be referring back to them throughout our discussion this morning, throughout the Word. These particular verses are in Numbers 30, verses 1 and 2. Numbers 30, verses 1 and 2. And, and the reason these particular verses are so important is because these verses are centered in a vow. Mm -hmm. And how does God feel about a vow? Yeah. When God says, bring ye all your tithes and offerings unto, unto my storehouse, it was all around a vow. Mm -hmm. And a couple weeks ago, in the, 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 the discourse, we referred to how uh, 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 and uh, Safari and Ananias, they, they got themselves into a quagmire because mm -hmm. they made a promise. That's what a vow is, a promise mm -hmm. to the Lord. And then when they were called on the promise, mm -hmm. they actually, the scripture says, why did you lie to the Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. What did me, what did the preacher, what did the those apostles, why are you lying to the Holy Ghost? Mm. Amen? Mm -hmm. You see, God reads and knows our hearts yeah. long before yeah. it gets to us. All right. Here are the words that the scripture says. Numbers chapter 30, verses 1 and 2. Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. 
he shall do according to all that proceeded out of his mouth. Amen? Amen. That's what the word says. Mm -hmm. All that proceeded out of his mouth. So when we make a vow to the Lord, we say, okay, God, uh, this is what I'm going to do. And, and, and uh, we uh, have already covenanted with the Lord. God holds us accountable. God holds us accountable. Amen? Amen. And it's on us and the Lord. Mm. Us and the Lord. And what we've said to the Lord that God is going to hold us accountable to. Amen? Amen. Amen. I, I tell you, one of the wonderful things that I mm -hmm. thank God for is that over the course of my life, I've always uh, studied eyes. There's something in the eyes. Amen? Mm -hmm. And even with all these fancy masks and everything, I can look in folks' eyes and I can tell who they are. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Would you turn with me this morning? <laughs> To Joshua chapter 9. Joshua chapter 9. Amen. Joshua chapter 9. We're going through a lot right now in our world. Yeah. And God is fully aware of it. Amen. But while we're going through what we're going through, uh -huh. there's some things that God is expecting from us. Amen. Amen? Amen? And the thing that I believe God is expecting for us, from us is also connected to the scripture that I just read. Amen. But I want you to see what the text says in these verses, and then I'll share with you our general thought for this morning. Amen? Joshua chapter 9. Mm -hmm. Joshua chapter 9. And I'm going to read about maybe five, six verses, and then we will uh, go on as the Lord has given us grace. Amen? Amen. Joshua chapter 9, and the text starts out this way. <laughs> and the men, begin with verse 14, and the men took of their victuals, and asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. Hmm. I want that to soak. And Joshua, verse 15, made peace with them and made a league with them to let them live. And the princes of the congregation swore unto them. At the end of three days, after they had made a covenant with them, they heard that they were their neighbors, and that they lived among them. And the people of Israel set out and reached their cities on the third day. Now their cities were Gibeon, Shepar, Beroth, and Kerjith Jerem. But, verse 18, the people of Israel did not attack them because the leaders of the congregation had sworn to them by the Lord. The God of Israel, then all the congregation murmured against the leaders. Verse 19, but all the leaders said to all the congregation, we have sworn to them by the Lord, the God of Israel, and now we may not touch them. Thus, in the reading of God's word. Now, if I were to give you a pop quiz mm -hmm. and ask you what is the key word mm -hmm. that you kept hearing resonate throughout mm -hmm. that passage, what would that word be? Mm -hmm. They swore. And when you swear, you're making a vow. Mm -hmm. And what we want to uh, 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 point your attention to this morning is standing on your promises to God. Amen? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to sing a little bit of I will trust in the Lord. But the key is 
that you and I need to recognize and realize how serious God is about us making a promise to him. How many have said, God, if you save me, I will serve you all the days of my life. Mm. Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. Mm. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because sometimes we make them promises yes. and just as fast as we make them. As yeah. soon as we get that blessing, we done forgot all about our God. Yeah. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust. Because you made a vow to the Lord. Amen. 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 I believe it was your brother that used to sing that song, I made a vow mm -hmm. to the Lord. Amen. Right. And, yes. and, and the vow that you make to the Lord is a vow that you need to keep to the Lord. And we'll get back to that verse again where it describes how God feels when we make a vow. Are you understanding what I'm saying? 
when 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 I, I made a vow to marry my wife, you know, and, and 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 the thing is that you know somewhere down the line, there are always in any kind of relationship there might be tensions and stuff like that. But I need to understand that the vow that I made, I made it first to God and then to her. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So now the thing is that if, if I got struggles, I need to, to draw strength from God to help me. Amen. To maintain the vow that I made to him. And if she's bottling in my ear, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. now I need to ignore the noise. That's what's going on in this election. Everybody's listening to the noise. You need to listen to make good, solid, concrete decisions. And that's what happened here in the children of Israel. We talked about last week about not letting your guard down. Well, how did they let their guard down? The Bible says in our key verse right here, the, the, they, they took... The victuals. See, there was a, a, a group of folks from the Gibeonites. And the Gibeonites came on down and, and they dressed themselves as though they were from a long distance country. And they pretended to be people that were in dire need. Amen. You see that all the time, don't you? Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and what happened was when they approached the children of Israel... And, and, and Israel was asking all the right questions, but they did not take time Amen. to look for an answer. Amen. And the text says that when they turned around and they gave all these victuals, the men took of their victuals. Now, when I think about that, mm -hmm. it raises some questions. Mm -hmm. How do you make your decisions? Mm -hmm. If you go back and you read the text, the earlier part of this chapter, it tells us that when they got there, the bread was already dried up mold. Yeah. It says that the wine, the wine skins are already split and all that kind of stuff. So if everything that they had was already old and outdated and, and, and not good to eat, why in the world am I going to take some stuff from you? Mm. Come on, talk to me. Mm -hmm. If you're going to bring me molded food, why would I take your molded food and make a, a, an agreement and a covenant that I'm going to take care of you. Mm -hmm. Come on, we need to talk about that. Yeah. See, there are things that happen that we don't pay attention to. The scripture says the men took of their victuals and asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. There are people that will approach you and God will give you all kinds of alarms and tell you to back off. Amen. Don't, 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 don't go here. Don't go there. Don't trust this. Don't trust that. There are people that are always coming our way and trying to get into our space and trying to get into our head and trying to get us to change the way we think and change the way we do things. And instead of us saying, Lord, what would you have me to do? Amen. Amen. We just, we just swallow right on it. Verse 15. And Joshua made peace with them and he made a league. A league is a covenant. He made an agreement with them. Amen? Mm -hmm. And when he made that agreement to let them live and the princes and, and, and the congregation did what? There's that word. They swore unto them. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They swore unto them. I'll take you in. I'll commit you. And whenever we, you know it's interesting, when we make a commitment to somebody we don't usually like to break it, do we? But when we make a commitment to God, boy, oh boy, it ain't so hard to break it. Why is it not so hard to break a commitment to God? Because you can't see it. Are y'all hearing me? Oh, somebody's listening. Amen. And, 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 and what was going on is that uh, as we look at the text, there's a verse of scripture. You can jot this one down too. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 11 and verse 14, this is what it says. Where no counsel is, the people fail. Mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter 14. You can write it down because I'm not going to stay there long. Amen. Proverbs, I'm sorry. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 14 says, Where no counsel is, the people fail. But in the multitude of counselors, there is what? Safety. So it didn't just say, 
uh, you know, my boy over here said this, so that's good stuff. Or my boy over there said this, that's good stuff. How many of you have been watching all this counsel we've been getting here in America, and we see all this bad stuff going on, and folks are still following the bad stuff? And now we're wondering, why in the world are we in the condition that we're in? How many folks have been asked, just, just you know, if you just wear your mask, that'll help us to at least get this thing under control. And then the moment we turn around, and, and, and I, I, I went in the store the other night, and I stopped up there, and I looked at all these folks, and, and I, I, I said, you got to be kidding. And, and I stepped outside, and I waited until some things thinned out, and then I stepped in, I placed my order, and I looked at them, I said, don't I know y'all? And then I told them exactly where they live, and all their faces and everything. Now, I kept my mask on, and I went back outside, and I stood in front of the window waiting on the folk to tell me that my order was ready. Mm -hmm. They eventually came back outside. You, you, are, you, are you understanding where I'm going, mm -hmm. See, See, when there is no counsel, mm -hmm. the people will fall. Mm -hmm. But in the multitude of the counselors, there is Satan. See, it became clear, yet somewhat late, that taking heed to one's own counsel was important. As we addressed last Sunday, they asked the right questions, but they did not pursue the answers to their own questions. There was a note of skepticism. Anybody ever find yourself kind of leery of somebody coming on with, with, with information and telling you this and telling you that and all that kind of stuff? Anybody ever bought something that, 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 that you thought you was getting a... a a good deal, and you turn out to find out it was hot. Mm. I'm not looking up. I'm not looking right. up. Amen. Anybody ever bought something? Out? You know, you buy something, you trying to impress somebody. Oh man, this is a hundred twenty-five dollar watch. Oh yeah, man, I'm trying to impress this girl, and I bought that thing, and that thing didn't work. <laughs> well, she might not remember it, but I did. It was embarrassing well, because I didn't get counsel. I looked for a shortcut. And that's what was going on with Israel. They took a shortcut. They heard what they said, but at the same time, and they asked the right questions. Joshua even said, well, you know, y'all might be from somewhere nearby. And nobody did take the time to check. It was after they made the agreement that I guess them guys start, you know, buzzing around and, you know, how they, yeah, we got this, we got this, we got this. And now they turn around and they go out and they start searching for information, searching for confirmation. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever put in for a loan? What's the first thing they want to do? They want to check you out. Mm -hmm. They want to find out if you can pay this loan back. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So they're not going to give you the loan and then start doing the homework. Mm -hmm. No, they want to know up front. So what happened is... There is skepticism, and as a result, Israel was left with a new commitment that they really did not need. The Bible goes to show us, it's these three things that I want to leave in your spirit, that you need to be careful, excuse me, when you're making your decisions and promises. You need to be careful making decisions and promises. Why? Here's an opportunity for a time to learn. Now, Joshua in verse 22, he wanted to know, see, after the fact, in verse 22, look what he says. He said, why? Joshua called for them, spoke to them, and he said, why did you deceive us? Why did you deceive us and say that you were a... Uh, 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 us saying, we are very far from you when you dwell right near us. Somebody wants something and they want something out of you, yeah. they're going to say what they want to say. Mm -hmm. Amen. I told y'all about the young lady that was, was acting like I was so cute and all that, and I knew better. <laughs> but I found out that they were, they knew I had a paper route and the paper boys made money. How did they know I made money? Because I came to their house to collect. <laughs> All right. All right. That, I, that was when I was young and dumb. Now I'm a little bit older, and, and I still need to pay close attention to the type of decisions that we make. All right? The Bible says that in verse 22, now Joshua wants to know why did y'all do that to us? Now, 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 this is interesting because 
if you look at their response. Now, therefore, you are cursed, Joshua tells them, and none of you shall be freed from being slaves, woodcutters and, and, and water carriers for the house of my God. So they answered him. Listen to what the answer is. Because your servants were clearly told that the Lord your God commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land. All the land. That's including the land we live in. Right? And to destroy the inhabitants of the land from before you. Therefore, we were very much afraid for our lives because of you and have done this thing. We were scared you was going to kill us. They made it clear. Amen. Don't think for one second that, that a con man don't have a good reason for the con that he's trying to run on you. Amen. Y'all hear that, sisters? Y'all hear that, brothers? Y'all folks looking for wives and looking for, 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 for husbands? Y'all better, better pay attention to what the words say. You better find more than one counselor. Are you hearing me? Amen. And you want to witness to that? Go back to uh, 1 Kings and I believe it's chapter 12. All right, now the Bible goes to show, but bad decisions often come with baggage. Can you, can you agree to that? Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and the kind of baggage that can be very costly. The commitment that Israel made with Gibeon bound them to them as their protectors. Why did they get bound as protectors? Because, see, they made a vow to the Lord that they were going to welcome them in, they were going to take them in, and they were going to be sort of like peers, partners, so to speak. Amen? See, an illustration, let me ask you a question. By virtue of illustrating, anybody in here ever did a cosign for a loan? Yeah. Amen. You ever did a cosign for a loan? Newsflash, that's your loan. Right. Yes. Are you hearing me? Now, now I thank God that my parents, they did this thing for me. And, and what it was, see, when I, I, I got this job, and, and I wanted to start getting me some credit and all of that. But in order to get me some credit, I had to do something. Now, what did I do? All right? I made an agreement with them. The first color TV my parents ever got, I bought it. All right? They co-signed, but I bought it, and I made it my business to make sure I paid that thing off. And that's the first piece of credit I ever got. But what happens here is that if you co-sign it, and that's basically what they did. Mm -hmm. See, they may not have seen it that way. When they made that agreement with the Gibeonites, what they did is they co-signed on their lives. Mm -hmm. Because when the trouble came... The Gibeonites knew exactly what to do. Amen? Amen? The way that the college loans go today, they want them to be parent loans, yes. not student loans. Yes. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So all that retirement that you thought you were going to get, <laughs> you better pray you got some honest children. Yes. You better pray they still love you. You better pray that they got some moral character and some moral fiber. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And that, that, that when it comes their turn, they're going to do their thing. Amen. Their statistics are that there's a whole lot of young folks, this Generation X and I guess Z and some of the other numbers coming down the pike, mm -hmm. they are moving back home. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Why? Because we done co-signed on them. <laughs> and now they want to collect. <laughs> but they not collecting. It's the folks that we done uh, made the agreements with. Have you noticed that technically that's still your loan? Yeah. Now if you choose to default on it, if they choose to default on it, guess what? You still on the hook. And, and what was happening is when the threat of war came against the Gibeonites, all they simply did was they went back to Israel and said, <coughs> These guys are coming against us. That's in chapter 10. Very first. There are five different uh, 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 groups that came together. And they said, oh, man, them Gibeonites, they done made an agreement with Israel. We need to take them Gibeonites out. Amen. And when the Gibeonites got word of it, all they did was they turned around and said, yo, yo, these folks is coming after us. Amen. Y'all need to come on down here and straighten this mess out. Why? Israel, because they, in their testimony, 
We heard what the Lord has promised you all. Mm -hmm. We have witnessed yeah. how you took out the, 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 the folks over there in uh, Jericho and Ai. And, mm -hmm. and the text <laughs> says that the Gibeonites, believe it or not, were stronger people than the folks in Ai. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were stronger than Ai, mm -hmm. but they weren't taking no chances. We ain't playing with these folks. Mm -hmm. We don't want to die. We don't want, because when God sent them in to take them out, he said, take out everything. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there was that verse that I read for you back in, in uh, chapter 8, I believe it is, where he said, everything that even pisses against the wall, take them out. Mm -hmm. Don't leave nothing behind. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And they were afraid of that. They were fearful. So, second thing is, first again, I, I say, you need to be careful how you make your decisions. Yes. Amen? Mm -hmm. Second thing, you need to be serious about keeping your vows. Mm -hmm. You need to be serious about keeping your vows. Even when they cost you. Right. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. See, because even if the vow is going to cost you something, mm -hmm. you need to be obedient to what God has already promised you mm -hmm. and the promise that you made to him. The Bible says that 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 God will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because we trust him. God also says that that he will never leave me or forsake me. So when I'm in a jam, amen, I can depend on God if I'm doing what God wants me to do. But like Samson, remember Samson got in that jam and God stepped back? Why did God step back? Because Samson allowed that woman to mess in his head. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. Samson had already uh, had a vow with the Lord, but he broke his vow with the Lord. Yes. And he told that woman everything she wanted to do, and she took him out. Amen. Yes. And when she took him out, now when Sam Samson reestablished his vow with the Lord, he said, God, I, I, I know that I was wrong. And I know that I made a bad decision. Mm -hmm. Now, this is ubonically speaking right now because Sam Samson didn't speak that way. But here's his, con his communication. He knew he made a bad decision. He knew he did some things that offended God. But he says, God, I am sorry, and, and, and all I want is another opportunity to glorify you. I'm not asking that you let me off the hook. I'm not asking that you spare me. But, Lord, I want to take them out to your glory and in your name. And it was at that particular point I said, even if it costs you, you need to keep your vow to the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say the Israelite community were not pleased with this new arrangement. Mm -hmm. That's why the scripture says, and the scripture points so clearly, and I need us to see in the text, the emphasis was still on who stopped them from going rogue? The leaders. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing that? Mm -hmm. Who stopped Israel from going rogue? The leaders. The Bible says that the people, they start getting antsy, they start getting rammy, and the children of Israel, they, they, they went together down in verse 17. They went down there, they checked those things out, and then the, in verse 18, the children of Israel, they did not attack them. Why? Because the rulers of the congregation, the leaders of the congregation, had sworn to them by the Lord God of Israel. See, if they were not getting that kind of teaching and training, mm -hmm. that's why you will not go to glory and say, hey, God, I did not know that I'm responsible for the vows that I made. Mm -hmm. Why? Because mm -hmm. I told you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Your Bible told you. Mm -hmm. If you're following me in the text, guess what? The text told you. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you refuse to open your Bible, guess what? God done already told you. And over in Romans chapter 1, he done already revealed it according to the scripture. Amen. He has made us aware that this is not the path you're supposed to take. So the Israelites, they did not like the idea that now we got to take all these folks in. Let me see. Is that familiar to anything else? How about some of the promises that we made in the DACA people? 
mm. and folks that came into the country. Mm -hmm. And we said, we're going to try to help these folks to get on their feet. Right. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden, we just want to kick them out and do this and do that. Let me tell you something. America had better pay attention to the promises and the vows that we make. We often talk about we are a, a, a Christian country and we're built on the principles and the promises of God's word. Well, you better pay attention to what we say. We had better pay attention to how we're doing things. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I mean, here, okay, fine. We had a tax thing that went up, but who all benefited from the tax? Everybody's talking about the stock market. Well, stock market going up. How many of y'all went back to work because of the stock market? Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, see, we need to look at the whole of America. We need to look at the whole of the people. The people of Israel were ready and rammy not to receive these folks, but the thing that held them back is that they had already been taught, they had been trained, and they knew, and now they had leaders that were ready to lead. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? They had leaders that were willing to lead. Even if the people rejected it, the leaders were willing to lead. If you go back and you study how many times the people were ready to stone Moses, and Moses would fall on his face and intercede. Didn't we talk about intercession, the power and the importance of intercession several weeks ago? And, and he would intercede on their behalf. He would go to God on behalf, watch this now, of rebellious people. And he would pray. And he would ask God to hold back his yes. wrath yes. on these rebellious folks. Well, because of the leaders, the leaders understood the principles of God when it came to making vows. Here's a real problem. Here's a real problem. The real problem is that verse of scripture that we read earlier around tithes and offerings. Amen? Amen. What did he say? Moses in Numbers 30 and 1 and 2, in case you didn't write it down, Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes. Who did he speak to? The leaders. Mm. Who did he want to get the message? The leaders. Why? Because leaders are going to communicate more frequently with those that are in the ranks. He spoke to the heads of the tribes concerning what? Mm. The children of Israel saying, this is the thing mm. which the Lord mm. hath commanded. Mm -hmm. It's really important, saints. I told you stories about my brothers and I. And there were times when somebody wanted something. And, 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 and sometimes they want to act like they, they, they in the driver's seat. Mom would tell them to go tell somebody to do something. And they would come out and say, you got to come in the house. You got to come in the house. Oh, really? You know, I used to change your diaper, but you tell me I got to come in the house. <laughs> in order to get the results, they had to identify whose authority they were operating under. Mm -hmm. When they turned around, they said, Mom said, yeah. Dad said, Oops, game's over. <laughs> you, you understand where I'm going? So the text shows us that when Moses communicated what God had to say, he communicated it to leaders, and he let them know this is what the Lord commands. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. See, when you come to me, it does not, you, I ain't going to say it don't hurt. See, if you don't want to do what God wants you to do, I ain't going to say it don't hurt. But it's not going to hurt me as much as it's going to hurt you. Yeah. Are you getting where I'm going? All right, because, see, when I step back, I done already told you, if the Lord give me a, 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 a warning that he getting ready to drop the hammer on you, I'm not taking you home. I'm not eating dinner with you. I might not even come in the building with you. Because I don't know where God's going to hit you. He might hit you on the bus stop. He might get you while you're out there fussing at somebody. Uh -huh. But I'm not going to be collateral damage for nobody. Amen? He says that if a man vows a vow unto the Lord or swears an oath, to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeded out of his mouth. Now, how does that put you on the hook? Well, I told you I read it in the Bible. 
I gave you the address of where you can find it in the Bible. And I don't care what translation you get, you're going to find something that speaks pretty close to what I just said. Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, what's happening is, in verse 18 again of our primary text, the people of Israel, and I have it underlined, they did not attack them. When they found out that these folks had scammed them, they did not attack them. And the reason they did not attack them is because, and it's in the text, the leaders of the congregation had sworn to them by the Lord, the God of Israel. And it was then all the congregation, they murmured against the leaders, but they still did not attack their folks. Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, we might not be satisfied, but you better obey the Lord. You better pay attention to what God has said. Amen? Does not the Bible say, uh, uh, love your enemy and do good to them that hate you and pray for them that despitefully use you? Yes. Does not the Bible say that, that, that you and I, if your enemy is hungry, you need to give him something to eat? And if he's, if he's naked, give him something to wear? Does not God, the Bible say, vengeance is whose? Mine. It didn't say vengeance belonged to Mitchell Baptist Church. It didn't say that vengeance belonged to any one of the family names that are in here. He said vengeance belongs to God. And then he goes on to say, I'll repay. Now here's where we have a problem. We don't see God paying back our enemy the way we want to see them pay back. And we don't see God paying them at the time that we want to see them paid. No. But the bottom line is that's none of your business. That's that that that's off, that's out of your leave. You need to stay in your lane. If God say he'll repay them, let God repay them. Do you do you realize? Let me tell you something. They may hurt you, they may harm you, they may scam you. But do you know how God might make them pay you back? How, how God might pay them back when he says, vengeance is mine. Anybody ever remember a man by the name of Zacchaeus? Mm -hmm. And how the Bible says Zacchaeus was a shrewd kind of guy. And he was a tax collector and he was collecting all kinds of monies and all kinds of things. And then the Bible says that Jesus was walking down the road one day. And he stopped and he just looked up and said, hey Zacchaeus, come on down here. Yeah. Because I need to have, uh, 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 I need to, you know, abide at your house. And the Bible says when Zacchaeus came down out the tree, Jesus never said another word. Jesus didn't tell the man to repent. Zacchaeus came down with a changed heart. And the first thing he said is, Lord, if, if, and he knew he did, if I have taken anything from anybody, I'm going to give him back what? Yes. For, for, for. I, I, remember now, he only jacked you for a quarter, but he come down saying, I'm going to give him a dollar back. God knows how to get vengeance. He knows how to exercise vengeance. And God can bless you if you just obey him. But oh, if you went up against him with your own plan, it's going to fail. Verse 19 says that all the leaders said to the congregation, we have, here's that word again, sworn to them by the Lord, the God of Israel, and we may not touch them. Are you seeing that? Mm -hmm. They knew and they understood that if they crossed that line, mm -hmm. it was going to be a, a, a negative impact mm -hmm. on their behalf. Mm -hmm. The leaders understood that if they went against the principles of God, they would be in a bad place with God. Mm -hmm. Their only options were to develop a creative means of coexistence and responsible management. Now, that sounds really, really technical, doesn't it? Let me tell you how the Bible says that that, that that works out. Okay? What they had to do was learn to trust God for the outcome. It's just that simple. Trust God for the outcome. The very illustration I just gave you, when God says, vengeance is mine, just trust God for the outcome. You understand what I'm saying? The Bible goes on to show us that what they began to do at that particular point, when they asked Joshua, when Joshua asked the question, why y'all treat us that way? Why'd y'all do that that way? And then the Bible goes on to say, so Joshua answered, so they asked, they answered Joshua and said, because your servants were clearly told that the Lord your God commanded his servant Moses 
to give you all the land and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Therefore, we were very much afraid for our lives because of you and have done this thing. So now how does God, Joshua, return? Now, I mean, you just, you just, you just lied to me and now you got the stones to tell me why you lied to me? Okay, now here's what Joshua had to do. See, if you and I are trusting God, we got to allow God to give the guidance and the direction mm -hmm. on how to solve this problem. Mm -hmm. Notice what he says in verse 26. So he did to them and delivered, uh, uh, verse 25, don't want, I don't want to lose that. Now here we are in your hands. Do with us as it seems good and right to do to us. You do to us what you think is the right thing to do. Mm. Well, the right thing to do is to listen to God. And what did God say? Verse 26. So he did to them and delivered them out of the hand of the children of Israel. Alright? So Joshua protected them. Joshua made it clear, I agree with the leaders, we are not going to hurt y'all. We're not going to put you in harm's way. So they did not kill them. You see that? Mm -hmm. Verse 27. And that day Joshua made them. So now, what did he do? He established Real creatively, a whole new group of people. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. He said, y'all going to be woodcutters? Your job, you're going to cut the wood. <laughs> Amen? And then he says, you're going to be water carriers? That, 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 that group back there, y'all going to carry the water? <laughs> Amen? Amen? So so now, if you're going to be a woodcutter, and y'all going to carry the water for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord in the place where he would choose, even to this day. You ain't going to argue with me. You're just going to do what we ask you to do. They became servants. And they were happy to be servants. Because in that very next chapter, we see that their enemies started coming together. And the enemies start talking about, uh, um, uh, we gonna, we gonna, we going to... We're going to go down there and we're going to knock them off. And in the very in the fourth verse of chapter 10, he said, Come up to me and help me that we may attack the Gibeonites. That's the mother of five kings. We're going to attack the Gibeonites. It has been uh, for making peace with Joshua and the children of Israel. So those guys got together. Verse 6, And the men of Gibeon sent to Joshua at the camp at Gilgal, saying, <coughs> They want to make sure they clear the throat. Do not forsake your servants. Come up to us quickly. Save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites who dwell in the mountains have gathered together against us. So Joshua ascended from Gil Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord, watch now, the Lord said to Joshua, do not fear them, for I have delivered them into your hand. Not a man of them shall stand before you. Are you hearing what I'm saying, Sam? Now, now, as you go home and you continue to see if the things that were said were true, and as you continue in chapter 10 and you read through there, you'll find that that's where Joshua told the sun to stand still. He told the moon to stand still at the voice of God. And God wiped those folks out. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And the Bible says that even the hail that God sent down from heaven killed more of the folks than Joshua and his men killed. See, you and I need to learn to stand on our promises. If we stand on the promises that we made to God, we need to honor God. Because God will honor those that honor him. We need to trust God because God is a keeper of his word. Thank you, Lord. We need to believe God that he will lead us and guide us every step of the way. And in doing so, he will never let us down. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. And we praise you for being an example of one that stood on your own promises. Mm -hmm. You said all the way back in Genesis 3 and 15, that you were going to send redemption. And then we see on Calvary's tree 
redemption took its place. We heard your son go into the garden. And in the garden, he said, Father, if it's possible to let this cup pass. But then he said, nevertheless, not my will, thy will be done. We saw how he stood on the promise that he made even before the foundation of the world. He suffered, he bled, he died. He went in the tomb and just like he said, he came out. And he came out and gave us victory. He came out and showed us, oh God, that life beyond death actually does exist. And Father, we thank you even right now for all of the illustrations and all of the promises and all the principles that we see played out throughout the biblical text from Genesis all the way to Revelation. And we pray, oh God, that you would help us to respect your word and to trust your word and to trust the Holy Spirit and to trust the Son of the living God and to trust your promises. Father, we pray that as we do so, we can be like examples. We can be like Christ. We can be like those, oh Lord, who live before us and that the world around us will begin to see that, yes, we need to be careful with the decisions that we make. Yeah. We need to make sure that we try to honor mm. those decisions that we make. And we need to trust and depend on you in everything we do. So, God, we pray with thanksgiving for what you have done and what you're going to do. Father, we rejoice for all those that we've heard have recently gone on home to be with you. We thank you, Lord, thank you, that Lord. they kept the faith. And they've lived a life, oh Lord, that brings honor unto you. And Father, we pray that if there's any that does not know you, if there are those that are still playing tag with sin, if there are those, Lord, that like the Gibeonites are walking around in a disguise and they come to hang out with us, but they're not coming, oh Lord, to allow the spirit of the living God to transform their life. We ask that you speak to that heart today. Speak in such a way, O oh Lord, that, that folks won't be ashamed to say, I belong to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Speak in such a way that folks will say, you know something, I don't want to run the risk of dying and not knowing that I belong to him and not knowing that he knows me. Because you already said that there's a day coming when many say, Lord, did not do this in your name. Did not I prophesy? Did not I cast out demons? Did not I do many wonderful works. And you say, depart from me. I don't know you. Yeah. Father, your word tells us about folks that ask the question, what, what do I need to do to, to inherit the kingdom? And you, and you turn around and you ask him, say, what does the word say? Mm. He said, I done did all that. Mm. And then you turn around and say, well, take what you got and, and, and sell it and give it to the poor. And, and, and he said, well, oh, man, he walks away with a broken heart. Why? Because he was more concerned about his stock. He was more concerned about his wealth than he was about his Savior and his soul. Father, you said, what does it profit if a man gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So, Lord, we pray today, by the Spirit of the living God, teach us, Lord, to stand on our promises like you stood on yours. Even now, Lord, if there's someone that does not know you, whether they be in the house whether they be in, in, in uh, seeing this later on, even if it happens to be going live, how we pray that you will help them to recognize and realize that it's not a complex thing to get to know Jesus. It's a simple uh, uh, reckoning that they have with him. Say, Lord, I believe that Jesus, your son, died for my sin. I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I need your salvation. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking you to come into my life and save me. And as you do so, and as you speak to God from your own heart and your own spirit, here is a news flash. He hears you. He understands you. And he has promised, according to the word of God, that as many as receive him, to them he'll give power to become the sons of God even to those that don't believe in his name. And if you've done that this morning, we want to pray that God will continue to speak to your heart in such a way that he will draw you unto himself and that he will surround you with those that are able 
to communicate with you. I know that there are some that knows, know exactly how to get to folks. You know some folks that you know are living right before God. Get a hold of them and help them. And, and, and ask them to help you to get to know Christ better. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray for thanksgiving. I want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And amen. 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 Can you give God a praise this morning? <laughs> we serve a God that is serious about us, and we need to get serious about him. Amen. Amen. Far too often when we have our problems and our issues, we go running to each other and not to him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Everybody ought to get right with God. Yeah.